Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the hot end, and we're also going to be looking at uh, how we can improve the performance of our 3D prints by controlling how the controller interacts with the hot end. So uh, what many folks may not know is that there's several different settings we can do in the EEPROM, and don't get too scared. It's a fairly easy setup to do to give us better results. However, before we go there, what I want to do is take a deeper look and do a little bit of a refresher course of how the hot end works so we kind of understand the dynamics here. So what I do is I have here my Bowden extruder. Uh, it's an uh, E5 clone. And we have a couple key pieces. And so we have the actual hot end itself, which is comprised of a cold break in here. We have a heat block. We have a thermistor that measures the temperature. And we have a nozzle. We also have the ceramic heating element, which inserts into the heat block as such and, and actually provides the heat. Now... The way that this guy works is it's a ceramic uh, resistor in here and it's got some pretty robust wiring because what happens is what we do is we apply a lot of current at relatively low voltages to generate a lot of heat. This heat gets passed to this heat block, this metal heat block, which then heats up this nozzle. Now, the char characteristics of this heat transfer is one of the things we're going to be interested in when we talk about the different type of um, methodologies we can use to control the heat. So this is a, a closed system in the fact is the heater heats, the resistance on the thermistor changes, feeds back into the controller, which then feeds back and controls through... Um, a FET or an SSR, this ceramic controller. And so it creates a closed loop system. So temperature reaches 200, say for PLA, turn power off, temperature drops, uh, turn power back on. That's how this works. Uh, so this is what we're going to work on adjusting mathematically. However, before we go there, I want to hit on a couple other points of of performance with inside the hot end and why this is important. Uh, one of the other ones is retraction. So one of the things retraction is, is the uh, when you're running short runs, you don't want ooze or stringing. So what happens is the filament gets pushed and the ideal thing is you want the filament to, to only melt in the nozzle or as it's ex being extruded by the nozzle. You don't want it melting back up here. So this is why we have this cold break in here in this fan cooling this down. Because the idea is the pressure of the filament pushing downwards on the molten filament in the nozzle is what extrudes it. Now with extraction, as you start pulling it back and forth, one of the things that will happen if you do it too many times is you can get a nozzle jam because what's going to happen is the, the rapid cooling and heating, cooling and heating of the filament as it goes back and forth is going to what I refer to as crystallize or cause the... Um, the polymer to lose elasticity or just to gum up if you will and this is what's important and I'm, I'm going to do another video on um, uh, sort of advanced extrusion later on in this series but I, I want to kind of cover this a little bit because the idea here is you really want the filament to be melting in the nozzle itself you don't want it to be melting back up here so you want to have good control of the temperature and you want to have the temperature where it, it's at the right melting point. Now in a past episode I did a temperature tower, kind of showed you guys how to find the right temperature for a particular filament. And that's very important. Now we want to try to maintain that because if we maintain a unified temperature uh, of this heat block and nozzle, we're going to get better prints. So. How do we do that? Um, Marlin firmware gives us a couple different ways. And I'll put a chart up here. So there's uh, four different ways. So there's bang, bang. There's uh, what I call slow bang or bang with the delay. Uh, there's uh, dead time and then there's PID. So uh, the most interesting one for us is PID. But before we get there, let's talk about the others. So bang, bang is just a rote uh, we turn it off, we turn it on, sort of like I mentioned here. So thermistor gets to 200 degrees, turns the power off, thermistor comes back, you know, temperature drops, thermistor turns power back on. What you do is you'll get a lot of cycling and you'll get a lot of overshoots. In other words, it's going to get, by the time 
uh, the controller reads the temperature. It could be over 200. Then by the time it reads the under temperature, say, you know, 198, and turn it back on you. So you're going to get a lot of overshoots and undershoots with, with bang bangs. Because it's either bang or bang, on or off, um, which isn't the optimal. And so if you're running, um, say, a bigger, but you say maybe, well, why does it exist? So if you're running, say, a bigger um, uh, type of, you know, heating element or process, bang, bang might work. So again, I think what they did, and this is my opinion, is, is I think the developers of Marlin just simply lifted some uh, basic industry methodology uh, to make this work to kind of speed things along. And, and so there could be some limited cases, but to me, bang, bang is, is, is pretty much limited. The other one is slow bang, which is just like bang, bang, but it has a delay between the ons and the offs. Why would you use that? Well, if this would be more so for like a heated bed. So if you have a heated bed, say that's powered by mains, um, and you have a mechanical relay, if you use bang, bang, you'd hear it chatter. You know, the, the relay would be continually engaging and disengaging. It would wear out the relay, it would drive you nuts from the sound, etc. Whereas slow bang would be on, off, or click, 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 click type rather than click, 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 you know, rapid succession. So that's where you'd use that for. Uh, in, in with, with, um, uh, bang bang, you'd either need like a, a FET or an you know SSR solid state relay to do the changing. But for us, where we're going to focus is on the other two. So we're going to focus on dead time, which is usually the standard, or PID, which PID is proportional integral derivative. Now that's a fancy term for sort of a minimalistic deep learning and algorithm, I would say, that kind of looks at the system that it's controlling and determines the attributes in that system. In other words, how fast does this heater cool? How fast does the controller respond? What's the typical overshoot? What's the typical undershoot? And then it generates basically three constants, uh, KI, sorry, KP, KI, and KD, hence PID, and those being constants, which the derivative or calculus formula utilizes to, uh, you know, control this system. Whereas the other one, dead time, basically looks is what I would call more of maybe a simplistic, uh, you know, bang, bang type scenario. So dead time, you know, provides um, a buffered window because, again, if you take bang, bang, where it goes on, off, on, off, on, off, dead time provides a bit more of a buffering uh, with an integral delay of that. And so uh, typically dead time is what you have set for most printers or what I've seen set for most printers. And it's good for an average, whereas uh, the, the PID is a little bit more complex, but I think you get better results. Now, I've seen a few things on the internet where, you know, folks have argued is dead time better than PID? Is PID better than dead time? I think you could argue that a little bit, but in my book, having worked with um, with, with deep learning systems as, as a daytime job, I'm going to tell you, I think PID is the winner uh, because there's more intelligence in the system. And I think especially as controllers get smarter and smarter, we will have better and better in algorithms or should have in controlling the various systems because one of the things you can get, you can get do some very interesting things. And this is one of the things Elon Musk, I think, did with Autopilot is he took a row of car and taught it how to drive by utilizing advanced control systems or formulas. And I think the same thing we'll see in the... Um, uh, 3D printing community to do some amazing things in the next few years. Uh, anyhow, so I wanted this to be a kind of a launching primer for this, how this all works and what we're going to get into. And in the next episode, what I'm going to do is um, we're actually going to, I'm going to show you how to hook up a, a digital thermometer, logging thermometer to the printer, monitor some of the temperatures, see how it performs so you get a better idea. In the third episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make the changes to a Marlin printer, i.e. the Wanhao in this case, uh, to um, set it for PID and how you do the PID sequences and some other little tips and tricks on that. And then the fourth, what I want to do is I want to kind of take all these sort of together 
and do a comparison to see how this all turned out. So anyways, hopefully this is helpful and you're going to find this series interesting. So hey, please give it a thumbs up. Help support the channel and it's free. Also, uh, it's getting on holiday season. Don't forget up in the corner, we have our swag shop. A lot of great swag that we've created all the graphics for and think you'll enjoy. And hey, also subscribe. So as these come out, you're notified of them and you can enjoy them. So cheers and we'll see you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.